Hi everybody, hello, happy day, it's Friday, <laughs> happy Friday, the last Friday of the month, oh my gosh, wow, okay, so um, Nicole will be on in just a minute, we're going to do some readings and have a fun conversation about things that are spiritual and about spiritual communication and energy, and we're so excited to share all this with you. We went live yesterday and woo, we had some amazing questions and topics come through that I wasn't even you know, expecting. So I was um, listening to the replay and I was like, oh my gosh, I love when spirit starts channeling through new information and when you all feel this call to ask really you know, unique and awesome questions. So hi, hi Kate, hi Aurora, hi Jillian and Kristen, hi Stacy. <laughs> yeah, Nicole's gonna be here. Uh, we're a minute behind, but that's okay because uh, she was coming out of a session. So she's back, she's taking clients again and we are offering classes and we have some events coming up. So, so exciting. <laughs> and I hope you all are doing um, really well and having an awesome holiday season, whatever that looks like to you. For myself, it was a lot of self-care and rest and not like stressing or over pushing, just really enjoying everything. So whatever that looks like for you, I hope you guys had a great holiday and it, that it continues, right? We're in the middle of it. So Okay, she'll be on in a minute, but what we can do is we can start taking questions for the collective and then we can flow into some readings. And let me pin a little bit of info here. Um, oh, hi, Sub Cougar. Hey, girl. <laughs> so um, we have two events that are already available at Spirit School. We have Learn to Channel for the Winter Cohort, and it comes with tons of bonuses and the lives mentoring with Nicole and myself again. And then on 111, we're doing a live online channeling event where Nicole will go into trance with Archangel Metatron and I'll bring the Council of Light through. So we're so excited for that. And um, yeah, so all the info is available at spiritschoolonline.com. And let me, hi Nicole. Okay, so she is back. Um, let me pull her in. So you're, you're here, Nicole, one sec. I'm just tagging everything. <laughs> Posting. All right, here we go. So Nicole's coming on. Okay, should all be flowing. Hi, hi Mark, hi Laura. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the bottom, there's the comment box, but there's also the question mark box. You can put questions in that too to help us stay a little more organized. Hey, girls. <laughs> hi, how are you? Good. Good. How's the day going? Busy. Very. <laughs> very busy <laughs> yeah yeah so i just shared a little bit about our online adventures that we have coming up and we have some more in the near future so um you guys can follow make sure you're on our newsletter but mostly i do a lot of um, updates and stories so that's been my go-to lately <laughs> how about you nicole yeah uh, i mean well really just sharing a lot in stories and then also in reels and um, our newsletter, if you go to either one of our websites or Spirit School, you can join our newsletter and that's like the quickest way to get all of the updates. So I know some people like email marketing, some people like here on Instagram, so we'll do both. We'll do email and to keep you updated. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, I was just saying like yesterday's conversation, which if you guys didn't um, get a chance to catch it, the replay is available. But that was such a good conversation with the questions that everybody had. So I just invited everyone to share questions for collective and then we can flow into some readings. And you have another session, right? So yeah, at, at three. So but um I think that's my last one for the day. So I can just if if um if we're ready, okay, that's cool. So Okay. <laughs> we'll yeah. stay on, on task. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, everyone, hi. So um, we're on our personal pages. So I'm thinking that maybe you guys know us and have already met us, but I'm Amy and Nicole's here and we're both channels and we do energy work and um, classes, events, and private sessions. So we're so excited to tune in for you today. I'm looking through in the question box. Um, we have Aurora, hey, love. <laughs> so Aurora saying, I have noticed a few women in my life family mostly, having some clearing taking place around the throat and sacral. I got a message that this is something to do with karmic clearing. Is this something that might be also happening collectively? All right, Nicole, let you take that one. <laughs> 
Yeah, I find that too, excuse me, particularly with women and standing in our power and standing in our birthright. And also like, because the roles have fluctuated so much, especially the last 50 years that women were really still um, question, some of us, not all of us are questioning our place in the world and our worth and what we bring to the table. And also that mother earth is also shifting the trajectory where we went into more of the industrial age, obviously in the turn of the century where that was more masculine energy. And I feel like as we cross the threshold from the eighties to nineties into the two thousands, more of the feminine energy is hitting the planet and we have moved into the photonic belt more as a planet or we have and so more light is hitting this planet and so we are waking up to divine feminine consciousness and the contribution that divine femininity represents here on the planet so that means the value that we're finding value going back to the renaissance ages going back to art and music and laughter and dance and, and um, tapestries and beauty and all that is femininity um you know and so we're we're finding this uh juxtaposition in power and so like really leveling out and balancing out the divine feminine field and so some people kind of get turned off when they hear divine feminine and when i feel that from them it's because i know they haven't worked on their own uh power issues and so divine feminine does not seek to destroy does not seek to um destroy the masculine here or eat him for lunch although some <laughs> do and the divine feminine wants to embrace and empower all of that beauty because through the human through the physical vessel that is the divine feminine we have all been birthed here and so it's really honoring her and getting back to our mother getting back to our roots and so yes a lot of the women in our family are moving through ancestral trauma finding their voice again and knowing their worth so thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you i love that yeah so how it shows up for me is like a deeper connection with earth and also i've been called to do a lot of toning and the vocal channeling of um messages of course because that's what i do but like just myself singing or humming or toning as i'm cleaning the house or whatever with a thought comes to mind or an emotion i feel like it wants to move through my vocal cords just to be released and then to piggyback on that nicole i also got the memory of the past year a lot of the past life um lives that came up for me dealt with not being in my power or, you know, the feminine power. And so it was really interesting that we're going through, we're like timeline hopping in this experience because I was clearing past lives of mine, but then we're also, everybody's working with our generational DNA. And it's so beautiful because once we feel mm -hmm. that shift and that balance and that like, oh, it just feels like all this beautiful pure light come through we can watch it manifest just take a minute and like watch over the next few days weeks and months as your whole reality starts to change but also your family and the women in your life so we are all connected <laughs> and the healing that we do for ourselves it, it literally affects everybody around us so i love that question aurora i hope it really um helps with the answer and bring some clarity i'm just getting a lot of um like to help move it through tribal music and moving the hips. So a lot of cultures have dances where you move your hips and um, just let it weave through. <laughs> let the energy, it's, I'm hearing like a message from the council, but um, just let the energy weave through the body because it's also going and moving through the DNA and clearing that out. So, oh, love, love, love. And um, y'all can leave another question if you have, and we might even just bring in a question for the collective here in a moment. But there is another one here in the question mark box from Jennifer. And hi, girl, hey. She's, so she is saying, if possible, I would love to know who my guides and my team and spirit are, my angel team. Um, thank you, beautiful ladies, you're welcome. So. We get this question a lot and I find it so interesting. So I'll, I'll tune in and I'll see what names come through, but I feel like you have a whole um, assortment. I'm hearing the word assortment of teams in spirit or energy to support you. And they're saying, don't overlook the power of mother earth right now that she actually is her own divine being representing the femininity here. But also you have teams in spirit. When we look to archangels, it feels like for you, that's where a lot of the masculine energy can come through. I'm getting Metatron, Ariel, Jeremy, 
me yell rag you well and send dolphin and it makes me smile and i know i'm channeling because i connect with ariel more in the female way but they're saying that ariel's coming through in the masculine way for you and then you have a team of um guides that are around i don't always get names but the first one I'm seeing is a male and he's saying his name is Rodney. You can call him Rodney and he feels like a master guide, meaning he'd be at the forefront for you right now in this period of life as the spokesperson. So yeah, I love this because we can have so much support we do, but as we open up and we tune into the different realms of realities, different levels of consciousness and themes or specialties that guides and um, angels have to share with us, we find we're truly supported on so many different fronts. Um, yeah, so I love it. And we talk about that and learn to channel the different realms because a spirit guide and mother earth and an archangel all will have pertinent and profound information to share, but maybe it comes from a different perspective. Well, it does, and it can come in with a different um, tone. So you might get like a firm, you know, message from Michael, but then Mother Earth will offer you more of a feminine loving embrace. So yeah, hi everyone. Okay, Nicole, um, do you see any questions or do you have anything else that's coming through on that? No, I mean, you, you did a great job. We, we can go to the next question. <laughs> Okay, everybody's just joining. Hi, guys. So um, these ones were, were answered, and I don't see any other questions. So sometimes it doesn't pop up, but just put it through if I don't see it. And let me tune in. Nicole, let's tune in for a message for the collective and see what comes through. I'll probably let you go first. I'm feeling like you're going to get it first. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, um, they're just saying happiness, like, is our guide, and happiness is really are the should be at the forefront of our mind that should but like it, the guides are requesting that we keep it at the forefront of our mind as we're going into this holiday season we're still in the holiday season that this can be drum up some feelings of grief or loss or aloneness or or being um not honored and so they just want us to understand and know that we are always honored and loved in the spirit world and that all of our teams and spirit all of our teams in, in the angelic realm our spirit guides everybody loves us it, there's a, like a thousand people behind every one person like in spirit that like love you so much and have your back and so they really just want us to know that happiness and joy um if it could be at the forefront of our mind as we are going through this holiday season into the new year and that will really push us through into 2024 of having that catapult momentum of energy behind us like a like a shooting star a rocket like just shooting you into your highest light your highest dimension and um may all your wishes come true they're saying so they're really everybody's super happy in spirit today oh, yeah. oh thanks girl i love that it feels yeah. so beautiful and i'm just getting all these like flash flashes of um what's been going on in my life the past week about going within and then just kind of feeling like okay this is fine because <laughs> you know when we're going going and then it, we have a chance to slow down we can have those thoughts come through, you know, like those self um, critical thoughts or what have you. But today, as I was getting ready, I was thinking about um, February and what we're going to be sharing on the next coming months. And I just kept seeing joy and I kept hearing music and glitter and like glam and sparkles. And I was like, yes. And so they were saying, you know, they'll come through like our teams are here for us and if we're going through something challenging they'll lift us up they'll give us positive messages but they don't want us to feel like life has to be so rigid and like a chore uh, they want us to bring more joy and happiness in and so i'm hearing a breath of fresh air like if you guys feel stagnant um go outside and take a breath of fresh air this was a message i think two days ago that they brought in but they're also saying other things so all of your senses smell and music and color and art and culture just like get out there and really live um but also honoring the season so i feel that i'm coming out of that cocoon and this nesting stage and really ready to like rebirth with the new year mm -hmm. and they're talking about um I just see a lot of gold, glitz and glam, and then cocooning and self-care. So about the seasons of all of life's experiences and being kind to ourselves. So I feel like there's a message here for somebody because they just keep showing it. Like I went through this, but it's, it's a message for somebody either on the live or on the replay about how it is okay. Like we don't need to be so critical of ourselves. So thanks for bringing that through because I feel like that's so important right now. Um, 
Okay, there are a couple of questions now. Oh, Sharon's saying I've been self-critical the past couple of days. Yeah, I feel like there's something coming up, right? And I'm like, gosh, girl. So I check myself when that comes through and, and breathe and work and clear it. But there's a thing about um, pushing it down. We don't want to repress it. Like when something comes up, right? It's like, let's look at that. Nicole, have you noticed things come up for you too lately? Um, yeah, I very self-critical like last night we did a psychic development class and everybody was so amazing and on point and like i had like 20 people that some were advanced uh or meaning like they've already been practicing psychic development and some were just beginning but everybody surprised themselves and were, walked out with a new skill and it's just like all we need is that little bit of encouragement that's why community is so important and people that really love us and really want to see us succeed so if we do have those self-critical judgments or ideas or thoughts. We call people that we love, that know us, that have known us for a while or can hold our hand and hold our heart as we go through something. So I did that last weekend. My girlfriend reminded me like how wonderful I am. You know, it's sometimes we just need that. Like we just need that leading squad. And so um, like last night in class, like everybody really just surprised themselves at like how much information they pull. Uh, through the veil very easily within two hours. And so like Amy and I, our course is 40 hours. So imagine what you do with 40 hours, you know, it's just, like, <laughs> so incredible, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then the support, and we already have the Voxer chat going. So you guys can join like right now. You can join today at spiritschoolonline.com if you're interested or send us a message if you want more details. But it's all about helping us understand that we are supported and the ways to connect in for information and guidance through the different Clair senses in a way that's practical and will support us. And I tell you, like life is life has its ups and downs like you know like it's been an experience and i'm so grateful that my team came through when they did and i've been able to keep a connection with them for all these years and it just gets better and better you guys so especially when things in energy or things really mm -hmm. trick come up it's like what is this about and you can really tune in and get a sense of peace and a knowing and then um like metatron comes in a lot we work with him so much He'll give, um, he'll give me action items. He'll say, okay, this is what's going on. Hold on, pause, let it play out, or uh, action time. <laughs> it's time for you to take an action and take a step. But yeah, so thanks for that um, message, Nicole. And there's a gentleman on there I had a question about spirit guides. I don't, I can't see it again. I think it's oh, Malcolm. Malcolm. Hi, Malcolm. Can you, yeah, yeah, can you say that? and they will answer that one yeah. yeah Malcolm and Malcolm I just have to share that I think I just responded to you on YouTube yesterday on an old video I literally just saw a message from you from like six years ago <laughs> and I didn't comment on I was like oh my gosh what I thought I did anyhow hi Malcolm so Malcolm is saying I like to know what my guides would like to tell me thanks ladies <laughs> Okay, Nicole, did you want oh, that oh, one or do you want me to You want me to go? Okay, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so um, I just keep hearing from your team, you know, trust and, and you're in the flow, you're in the process and like you're more of a channel. Like when you let the information flow and come out of your mouth, that's really your guides, your angels, your team speaking through you. It's like a stream of consciousness that just flows through you. I always tell people it's like a ticker tape. Like it's just, it's just information that just flows out. So I really feel like trusting yourself and your guides are saying, just sit with us, sit in prayer or meditation, sit with us so you can feel us. And then when you go to open your mouth or you go to channel or give information psychically, just knowing that it really, it just comes through that way very easily for you. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and Malcolm, I'm also getting for you a way that spirit helps you quiet the logical, busy mind so they can come in. I keep seeing you drawing on the beach with a big stick in the sand, and then they're showing, uh, like some people get those little sandboxes and meditation ones, and you can rake them or just, there's something about this technique that will help you allow your mind to separate from the forefront of all of the thoughts so spirit can come in. So this will help you enhance your um, reception of messages. And then let me ask them. Okay, then when the 
the messages come in, it's like they're going to come in and sit in your throat and heart. So they'll be, they'll be with you and you can have that information later. You don't have to, you can, but I was asking, well, should he write it down? Should he record it? And they're like, no, 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 it's going to stay with you. So you'll be aware of it. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Tati, Tati girl sticks to as asking any questions or any, sorry, any messages for me <laughs> first time here. And, um, I'm like, so feeling this energy right now. I'm almost going to go into trance is how strong it is. So let me take this one. And then Nicole, um, you can take the next one. So Tati girl, let's see. And welcome by the way. Hello. Welcome. So, <laughs> I keep seeing the importance of the color yellow for you and I'm seeing all the emojis of the yellow hearts. They're showing me yellow foods. They're talking about empowerment, working with your solar plexus chakra for confidence. And it feels like there's been a series of events, some more impactful than others that have kind of knocked you out of alignment over time. Um, some of this was in the past and past lives even. So you might feel like this is your normal space of being. But once you start working with your solar plexus, you're going to find clarity and a strong resolve with peace within yourself. Um, again, they're talking about inner judgment, that inner critic, but the solar plexus works a lot with the judgments and how we, we um, project our appearance to others and our interaction with others. So that interaction with others has come into your energy body and it's starting to create or it has created a little bit of a wavering and a quivering and a misalignment with how you view yourself and how you view the world around you. So you can do some deep level healing in all aspects of life with your own inner conversations and your communication with others by beginning to work with your solar plexus chakra. There's so many ways to do that. If you want more information about it, send me a message, but I would say, you know, the foods, the toning, the mantras and the co and I'm sure Nicole would say yoga <laughs> and I say yoga too. <laughs> and so that will help to get it, um, the energy moving and clear out. And then you can go into meditation and just visualize or put your hands on the side of your chakra and bring it back centered. So Nicole and I can um, work with you if you want a private session for energy therapy, but that's the technique. It needs to be centered back in. And then one of the vortices is detached. So it's like starting to rip. So you want to get that secured back in as well. Um, so, okay. All right. Thank you. And I'm so happy you're here. Welcome. <laughs> okay, girl. Can you see this, um, feed here? I, I have one. Did you, did you do ethereal guides? Did you just do that one? No. no. Okay. So I have ethereal guides and she said my, or he said, I don't know, um, my first time here as well. And so I'll just do like a little message, um, for you. And so they're just saying that, your team, you have about three different teams that you work with. So it seems like there's one that's like very galactic, one that's more like spiritual and one that's more like ancient, like past lives. So I would say, depending on where you're pulling your information from, get to know those different subset of guides because then it will make sense to you. Because I feel like sometimes we're all over the place with guidance and we don't really know like who to talk to or where the, the information is coming from and can we really trust it? So. Um, Metatron, as you have said, is with us and he is coming in to show me that there are three different subset of guides that you have. And so getting to know all those different ones, because the information is going to be different sometimes. And sometimes it can be conflicting. Like I've had that before where I get conflicting information and then I got, I have to like deepen in with my heart and see where it resonates for me, especially given my chosen point of reality, meaning incarnating here on the physical planet, which information makes sense to me and how I use it in my day-to-day -day guidance. Um, but they say that you're going on to be very, very successful. I do see if you're not already channeling, there is a channeling career um, ahead of you that you will be doing more vocal channeling. I believe that's probably why you're attracted to Amy and I, is that you're really stepping into this vocal channeling and using your voice more, which I feel like there's a theme here today. And that's usually how spirit works is like bringing people together who need to hear a very similar message, which is standing into your power, uh, you know, using your voice, using your guides, knowing your team, knowing your worth. And so all of that pertains to you as well. So thank you and leave you with that. Oh, thanks, girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I'm having a little experience right here. <laughs> so, um, so 
Demari Lauren is above and she's saying, I would love to hear anything from me. I've been feeling heaviness lately. And so as you were talking, I was like, oh, I'm going to take that question next. And so then I started feeling the heaviness. I'm like, oh my gosh. So um, if you are open and okay with me clearing your energy, I would love to do that because it feels very uncomfortable. And um, Metatron and Michael are here and I'm getting kind of fired up because there's a energy around you that shouldn't be there. Like it's thoughts of others or their spoken emotions and words that have come in, they're depositing at your heart. And so just want to like clear that out for you, but I don't want to work without your permission. <laughs> so let me know in comments below and um, we can do that in a minute if you would like. It's already kind of clearing just by calling it out but would love to help clean that up and then um hi everyone okay so i'm not really seeing too many other questions unless we missed it but um oh in the question box there we go all right okay um oh <laughs> nicole here's a question for you i know you can't see the question box so this is from jennifer and she says hi nicole you mentioned that you love yoga i love yoga as well I'm just wondering if there's a certain teacher that you follow. Um, so in, in the beginning, I used to uh, practice a lot with Dharma Mitra, which you may not know him. He's in his 70s. He's 76 years old, but he is a very um, old, not old, but like traditional uh, yogi. And, and his lineage comes direct from India. And so his guru was Yogi Gupta, who taught me a lot on the mat and spirit. And so I basically follow that lineage or that tradition. And that tradition is not um, guru sense centered, meaning after Yogi Gupta died, uh, Dharma Mitra was not, not wanting to be the self-proclaimed guru. And he's still alive in New York City, by the way. You can take classes with him. So he empowers his students to really delve in to the yoga science. And, and to really master your own practice. So with that being said, I, um, it's more Ashtanga based, which is Patabi Joyce. Um, I did not, was not a student of Patabi Joyce as more, like I said, a student of Dharma Mitra. And, um, and also, but I do love, uh, my God, who's the girl in Miami that I used to, Kino. Yeah, I used to practice with her in Miami and in Fort Lauderdale because I lived there and they're also in Ashtanga Patabi Joyce lineage. So it's a more physical practice, but we do a lot of chanting, a lot of mantra, do a lot of pranayama and a lot of meditation. And so if you take a class with me and I will be doing one for spirit school, I have to film that. Thank you for reminding me <laughs> that I'll be doing all the traditional mantras and chants and asanas that I have been taught for the last 13 years. And it's a phenomenal practice. And if you're in the Philadelphia area, I would love for you to come take class with me, which I teach every Saturday morning in PA. And um, you can DM me if you are in the area and I'll give you directions and address of where to go. So, but it's a definitely like wild time. And they are also more into the psychic development, obviously part of yoga where you are using your mind and manifestation with the mind and learning how to use the universal energy at will. And that's what Yogi Gupta talked a lot about in the 1950s and very advanced practice for him. Well, not for him, but for people that would follow him. So thanks for asking that question. Oh, yeah. awesome. I love it. Love, love. Um, okay. So let's see. Joanne is asking, I would love to know if you have any messages for me and what my, what guides are around me. Okay. I can tune in unless, are you getting anything straight away? No, Oh, you go right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Joanna, okay, one moment. I'm just clearing some energy. There's a lot of different <laughs> energy here. So, okay. Um, I keep seeing all the colors around, and I think it's the color off of your profile photo. Yes. Okay. So, like the colors on your profile photo, I just keep seeing that around. And then I'm seeing a track, like a train track, and they're saying that you're following the path. It might feel dark or ominous at times, not like creepy ominous, but kind of just like I'm walking alone at night. And is this a safe place? And so they're saying if you can ask for some more guidance and light to come in around you, it's going to show you the next few steps in front of you because you are on your path, but there's just like this little bit of wavering at times that feels uncertain for you. And um, Metatron would love to like start working with you through automatic writing. 
And so it's a beautiful form of communication and channeling and information that is going to start tapping on your memories. So if you journal, you're going to find that you're led to certain points of time in your past that bring up a memory. And as you're writing it out and then you go back and review it, you will see a theme and a topic and a message for you that's this wisdom shining through. On top of that, the more that you continue with the journaling, it's going to flow into that automatic writing where you'll start to hear his presence come in and give you these words of encouragement and remind you, and he's saying remind you because you already know at a soul level what steps to take along your journey. Uh, you have a big, or it feels like an important period of time from now through the middle end of okay so from now through april 24 is what i'm seeing that's just like it's going to feel like a heavy stretch or a sticky stretch but it doesn't have to so there's this um time of going within they're saying rewriting timelines getting closer to the reality that you want to be birthing through and a lot of shedding of the old and honoring that as well like when we talk about letting go of the past whatever that might be if it's relationships or hobbies or career whatever it might be they always want to remind us about the honoring of it to take the wisdom and the joy with us if it was a volatile experience this is kind of for everybody here putting up strong boundaries so um and and really releasing that connection but so i guess the major message here is tuning in because the next four months are going to be very transformational for you and you have light around you if you ask for more and ask it to go a little bit in front of you you're going to be guided and be shown the necessary path um, based on the little choice points that you have so basically it's this big path but you can waver a little bit within it so they want you to help make it smooth <laughs> They show me the highway like I know I'm going here, but there's four lanes and which one's the fastest that's not going to have wild energy coming at me where I have to slam on my brakes and maneuver. So yeah, so Archangel Metatron work with him. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Hi, Andre. Hey, it's been a while. <laughs> so nice. So nice. Oh, thank you, Fractal Flower. Um, yeah, that's that was like a, an example of a message for one person's personal um, for Joanne's personal question, but I feel like it had depth to it that we all can use to understand the aspect of automatic writing and how our team will work with us and how we are called to show up because they'll give us guidance, but then we take the lead by doing the action step along with it. So, all righty. Okay, Nicole, how you feeling, girl? Oh, good. good, really good. Yeah. Everybody's saying thank you. And yeah, I saw our boy on there. It's awesome. I feel like this is like a reunion, like all the OGs from like fucking 10 years ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. it's so, so good. And it's like pre pandemic, you know? Like, I feel like the pandemic like shook everybody up and like now we're getting back to our roots. This is good stuff, you know? Well, so nice. So, yeah. Hi everyone. Um, here is another message. Let's see. Oh, no, no, let me find. There's quite a few. Um, <laughs> so this is. Uh, okay, I don't know. Okay, I gotta read this. So I'm trying to like get the vibe of it. But there's two messages here from Christelle, and um, she's saying, "Hi, Amy. Nice to meet you, Nicole. I hope you guys are enjoying your holiday with friends and family. Yes, thank you. And then her question is saying, Amy, is there anything from spirit about people conspiring behind one's back, possibly even sabotaging secretly even? Could this be from past exes, tricking into friends who have been manipulated, etc.? So I don't know if you're talking about like in your personal life, but that stuff goes on all the time, um, you know, in the human reality as we are working through things. Um, what they're talking about is, yeah, like it's so interesting because when I tune in, I see this vision that feels to me like past lives also. So they're saying things, this is Metatron, things are being re worded and worked out and that's about getting clarity so there can be some manipulation in that that you would want to stay clear from this is where it's very important to trust your intuition they say 
it's a free will planet. Like we're here with positivity. We want to help create unity and have everybody living with high morals and an integrity. But for that to happen, some people that have been carrying, um, they're calling them secrets with them, maybe from life to life, it needs to come to the surface to clear and flush out. If they don't quite understand it, they might start acting upon those impulses. And so if anybody would feel something that feels foreign come from them, like, wow, why did I think that? I don't think these thoughts of others. Take a minute and see if it belongs to you or not, and then ask if it did belong to you, how to let that go, and how do we bring love into it? Now, if you feel like somebody or some people are being secretive behind your back or whatever, um, also just ask for the light of God to be around you and know when it's time to detach. It's important that we have strong boundaries. Nicole and I are like, we don't play games. <laughs> you know, in our personal life, if people are being shitty and shady, we're done. So at this point in my life, I am not about to like be given chance after chance after chance. And so it's just a progression for me where in the past I would let some people hang around a little bit more because they were working through things, but I'm at a point in my life where I don't want that energy around um and like if you if you have a moment and you're going through something just step aside clear it and i invite my friends to do that too and then come back when they get it figured out but um nicole what are you feeling about this question because this is it feels like a loaded question there's so much here i could talk about i mean yeah and you're not the only one like so many of my friends have expressed that especially with the closing of this year <laughs> And um, it's kind of, and I was asking that question too, like as far as density and form is concerned, like um, if we see the red flags and we know that somebody doesn't have a pure heart, so it's a difference if they have a pure heart and you know that they're working through something and maybe they don't get to hang out in your inner circle, but maybe like the outer circle <laughs> until they get their shit together. Because um, anything that's in lack, separation, jealousy, fear, um, competition is a really big one. Like, you know, if you think you're walking around that you're better than somebody else or that your shit don't stink or that like you look hotter than somebody else, or like you just are, you have no room for any kind of discernment or, you know, you cannot put, or empathy is a big one. If you are a person that does not have empathy or compassion for others or humility, right? Like these are all red flags that this person is not, their heart is not open. Because I don't know about you, but when my heart's open, I can feel every man, woman, and child on this planet. It takes me two seconds to tap into their field and their heart and their energy. And I can empathize, I can have compassion, I can have humility, I can have love, um, an unbiased heart, you know, just wanting everyone to win. So when if you cannot come from that place, then and, and you get to choose who, who, who are the people you want in your inner circle? Who are your cheerleaders? Who is your, who are your community? Um, there's a lot of those, uh, motivational speakers from back in the eighties and nineties. And I'm probably, you know, dating my, not dating myself, but I'm, I'm 43. So like, okay. So I listened to stuff like that. And like, they always talked about like, hanging out with like your closest 10 to 12 people because we start blending energy. So the, the, the first 10 to 12 people that are like your army and that are closest to you, you're going to end up being like those pers those people. So if you don't have those good people in your corner, um, then that's, you know, you're not going to be able to build anything. You're not going to, it's not going to be sustainable. And I'm not talking about uh, not being like, what do I want to say? Like the, the picture they're giving me is like Jesus, right? Like Jesus hanging around with, everybody in his community because he absolutely loved all beings everywhere it didn't matter what level they were working themselves on there is a point that you get to when you are like that right where you have a helping hand for absolutely fucking everybody on this planet but when you go home at night and you are like unraveling or working out your shadow side or working on um building for your family and your friends like your inner core people have to have your back through and through or it just doesn't work out that way. And so there, there are, there are some sheep in, especially in the spiritual community and especially in, you know, the channeling community and especially in any community. I want to say, I just tell people like spirituality, the spiritual community is the same as used car sales, uh, people like the same, you know, you're going to have good ones. You're going to have not so good ones. And the way that you can tell is like, 
who are they uplifting? How are we all holding each other to a higher standard and pushing the envelope forward? Morals and ethics apply in every industry. You either have morals and ethics in one industry and you can't in another, like it cancels each other out. So it's really just about holding on to basic morality be a good fucking human and if you can't then like see you later bye and like you can go hang out with somebody else but um i really do feel like this is a good question to ask as we are going into 2024 and really making it apparent and clear who we are as an incarnated being and who we're here to serve and help and then also those others that we get to keep around us and moving forward mm -hmm. so Nice. Yes, girl, I really feel that. And I was um, also wanting to share, you know, when you're sensitive, empathic, psychic, and I think we all are, so whatever level, but, and then you have people and you just keep your door open and you let people come in that don't have high um, morals or compassion for others. And maybe they just are unconscious and they're doing things or saying things that are hurting others. You know, that starts to feel really gross to his channel to have those people in their inner circle we feel something is off and it's not to judge like that person because clearly they're going through something so i just look at it like what frequency are they in what um what are they doing and how is that affecting others like if they're hurting other people i don't want to be a part of that even to just stand by and you know and act like nothing's happening so in those times, you know, I just, well, every, every time is different, but basically we need to take the boundaries to know how we can keep our space clean and clear because we might feel like, oh, it's okay. We'll just let them hang around. But then you're on a um, subconscious and on an energetic level, consistently fighting against that. You're feeling something's off here. And um, so it is important. It is important to have compassion for everybody and understand they're going through something. And if they would like resources or they want your opinion, all for it. Um, what I was talking about earlier would be like when people just keep it up and they don't, <laughs> they don't want resources or opinions. They just find this is great to treat others in such a harmful way. So, um, but this is interesting to me, Nicole, that this chat and then yesterday's had some kind of heavy questions and topics come up like that's not <laughs> that's not typical for our lives and so it's showing me that there is a lot of healing and clearing and also i'm seeing the mind just getting clarity like be a good person what does that mean if we want to work with spirit if we want to work with others if we say oh i'm a light worker like there's a lot of accountability that needs to be spoken about and and um Oh my gosh, you're talking about so much shared and regulated and just coming to the forefront. And so that's what's coming up right now. And I will say, like, I've had some people in my life that I love dearly. They needed to go on their little journey. And years later, they're back in my life again. This is not like divorce, separation, like I'll never be your friend again. It's kind of like, hey, um, that's not my frequency. I don't function in that reality. But if you feel like that's where you want to be, I'm doing my thing, and if our paths meet again, then awesome. Like, I still love you. So, yeah, I just felt like <laughs> I need to share a little bit more on it because it just needs to, it's interesting, it needs to clear. And what they're showing me right now is a fire ceremony. So, if this is coming up for anybody in your personal life, um, journaling or writing on paper what's coming through and burning it, just some transmutation, you know, burning it with love and just saying, okay that's not gonna be a part of my, my field because whatever we're keeping in our energy field or what we let come around starts to energetically create a shift in our own vibration, which that's the whole manifestation. That's what I was talking about, like the 12 people in your inner circle. I don't even have 12 people <laughs> in my inner circle, but you know, the people in your inner circle, you really wanna also feel comfortable about them. If you have somebody and you see they're treating others in such a poor way, what happens when you need support? You think they're going to treat you any different? So it's a whole situation about learning the dynamics of being a good human and also staying in your light with your integrity um, and your morals on point. So love it. Um, okay, Nicole, I'll let you take this next question. <laughs> I'm going to close that <laughs> topic down. Right Wait, um, are you taking it from the chat or, or where are you taking it from? Let's take the one from Felicia that popped up on the feed oh. so you can see it. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm so alone yet try so hard to heal, but feeling like I'm more tense 
and emotional looking for purpose am i on the right path that's so important like everybody always asks if they're on the right path we're always on the right path if we're like acknowledging where we are and where we want to go so i feel like you have a very good awareness here you have an awareness of that you're feeling tense and emotional right now so i always tell people especially if you're a channel or light worker that intensity and that emotion is so good because that's where spirit is that's where the light is the light is in the emotional frequency because the emotion lets you know that you're on point and it lets you know that there's a connection here that needs to be spoken shared or channeled so for you particularly your team is saying that um Okay, so they're saying that there's an event that happened about five years ago that really needs some attention and cleaning up. And it looks like either forgiveness or forgiving those for what they did not know is what I'm hearing. So like that that um, old saying, like forgiving those for what they did not know. So like I feel like there was people about five years ago that really hurt you. And so like this emotional frequency and connection is coming back in in this timeline. And it's pulling at you because they say that you're trying to move forward and it looks like you're moving forward in either a relationship or a timeline with another human. And that could be an intimate relationship or a friendship, but they're, I'm just seeing the relationship with another human moving forward. And you're having kind of like these triggers or emotional responses to the energy. So that is where the, the intensity is coming around. So they really want you to start to let go of that energy and understand that it's coming in from five years ago and really just like cut cords and saying goodbye to it and knowing that you're not in the same space and as you move forward that you're going to make better decisions for yourself so it's almost like trusting yourself and trusting the guidance that you're receiving and knowing that spirit has your back and you're going to be okay so you're, you're yeah and you wrote in your question and yet try so hard to heal yeah mm -hmm. so that's it's like just going back to that timeline knowing that the brain and the nervous system is remembering that old timeline and that's why it's freaking you out in this timeline cutting it moving forward and then letting your heart heal so i'll leave that with you <laughs> um there are two things that i want to share one i want to talk a little bit about the cords and the cutting but i want to um, acknowledge christelle's message or follow-up about our previous question about you know trusting your friends and all of this and she said, I totally agree with everything you guys are saying. Thank you kindly for that. I do feel even some friends are maybe jealous. Some pretend to be your cheerleaders to your face, but are jealous behind your back and maybe secretly sabotaging. Yeah, so that's your intuition and just start to kind of separate yourself until they clean up their act. <laughs> that's all I have to say there, you know, just just give it time to separate and observe and see what unfolds. Um, but about the courts, and this is interesting, Nicole, I'm coming up a few times in our lives and um, some people can have where they say oh I'm done with this relationship but like you mentioned yesterday maybe there was a contract that wasn't fully in the physical world um, you know dissolved and so there can be these cords that we have to others that are dormant and quiet and then later on in the future they get activated again and that happens like I've seen this in sessions and I've seen it in my life where all of a sudden I think about somebody so random, maybe from 12 years ago. And I realize like, oh, in some way we're still connected, you know, and then it gives me an opportunity to feel like, what do I do with this? <laughs> Knowing is it meant to continue on or is there energy that I can release? It helps me stay clear and not feel like I'm um, being linked into or I'm linking into somebody else. Right. So as we're moving through with the new energy, the new year, it's so nice to reflect on things, but it's also nice to be aware of what comes up from the past and what does that mean for us. And so I felt like in this message, you were saying that there was, you were saying there was a cord, Nicole, right? That wasn't fully cleared. Yeah. Do you, do you have tips for clearing? Like what would you share for those at home that have never done this before for clearing and working with cords? yeah so when i do that for me water is so powerful for me so like i will shower sometimes like three times a day because i have so many sessions but at night what i like to do and i talked about this yesterday is i use epsom salt so i will get a bath i will use epsom salt and i feel very safe in in a warm bath and i feel like that's like a cocoon or going back to the mother's womb or something there's something very healing for me and i literally go into the bath 
and I will let myself go back to that timeline because I feel safe and held by the water and the salt and go back to that timeline, bring the memory up and then ask Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron to come in and cut that cord. And once they cut that cord and I release it and sometimes I can release it with emotion. Maybe it's anger, maybe it's sadness or resentment, like whatever needs to come up for me, I allow myself to feel it. So cut the cord release that emotion and then how you know it's really released is that i get a sense of peace in my heart or a glimmer of forgiveness if somebody's literally if it's somebody that has hurt me or somebody something that i want to forgive it doesn't mean that i'm going to allow that behavior to continue or accept that behavior going forward it just means that i forgive them in that time and space and i can move on energetically so that's how i know in my heart if that cord has been cut and it's usually like the lower heart into the solar plexus that you can actually feel it and feel that it's cut. So after they do the cord cutting ceremony, then I'll go back into the bath and I'll, I'll run light through my body, which it may sound more advanced than it is. It's really, I just, well, okay. I'll just say it. Like call on the Palladians, you know, and I ask them to, to, to bring light, the frequency of light into the bath and, um, we just use light codes and, and go and like scan the body with the light. And so I'm amping up each frequency band within my cellular body and also my energy body. And I just keep streaming and pouring in so much light and it literally like fills in every, um, every field, like all of the holes that were in my auric field were all of the holes that were in the energy body. And then I'm able to move forward. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I was just still um, feeling some of the heavier, like, emotion behind some of the questions today. And so right when you said Palladians, I was like, I'm Syrians in my head. And then, boom, like, it started to clear. <laughs> so I think it's probably, like, totally different for you and I, Nicole, because we're opening to ask for information to feel what's going on. But if anybody else has tuned into this and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a little bit, like, if you're really sensitive and you're feeling a little heavy pressure, Ask for it to be cleared away and it will lift away. Um, it was quick. <laughs> so, and then also like toning and using sound instruments can help things clear away. And once that happens, like if we feel that we're, our, our um, aura, like for me, gets staticky mm -hmm. and I'm in the middle of the experience, and I'm like, oh, there's energy around. Once I clear it away by asking for assistance, then I also like to just pour light back into my body like strengthen my energy, um, remembering who I am. And that's where then the compassion comes in. Cause it's like, oh wow, I just had a taste of what somebody else is going through. And that was so uncomfortable. And now I'm back in my own frequency. And then at that point, it's like, let me send some blessings. Like, let me call in love and help them as well. So it's all about, I'm seeing like a golden heart. It's all about our intentions and how we hold ourselves and if we have a pure heart and i think that that's probably like a strong foundational message a theme through all of the questions of today <laughs> like going into 2024 really thinking about the being of who we are not we're, what we're going to do or or um like when we say who am i and we put a label to it but more like the vibration of the beingness so for me it's you know feeling peace within clarity of energy and feeling that love flowing through for others and you talked about that nicole like when your heart bursts wide open we have so much love and compassion for others um and also that comes along with those strong boundaries so it's <laughs> it's very very interesting but these are some of the hallmarks of working and keeping energy clean because if you start flowing into spiritual bypassing or letting things slide it's just like you're not cleaning your energy all the time and then it can really add up like if you're not sweeping your floors and dusting or taking a shower you know like that can add up to gunk and we need to think about that energetically as well so i know you have to go in a minute i'll let you share like one last you know message if you want to do readings or whatever's coming through girl what are you feeling yeah so i have i think it's tati a uh, girl 
the 6th, I think. Any info on who my spirit guides are? And if I totally did not say your handle, I apologize. Um, but just any info on, my, on who? Yes. Okay. So I just have a lot of divine feminine energy for you. It's particularly like a Mother Mary, like matriarch behind you. And behind that, I have Athena. And behind her, I actually have... And I'm not, I really hope you don't get scared about this one. And I am going to talk about her at some point, but I have like Medusa and they think Medusa was just like bad, but Medusa is actually part of the Versace symbol. And I don't know about you, but I like Versace girl and like Versace is badass now. So Medusa carries a lot of energy, particularly with the divine feminine and a lot of the divine feminine goddesses were um, keepers of sacred sexuality and keepers of sacred power. And what happened is if they were not honored, then they would turn people to stone or sink the ship or whatever, call a tsunami in. You know, they just had like huge power. And that was really symbolism for Mother Earth. Like, what can Mother Earth do? Mother Earth can create a, uh, an earthquake. She can have a volcano erupt. She can have a tsunami go on. She can have a hurricane come through. So like mother earth is pretty powerful. And so what happens when a baby is born? I mean that if any woman has gone through childbirth, that is such a miracle, the way that a baby is created and developed and then birthed through the birth canal. So I feel like you carry a lot of this energy and it's the energy of rebirth is creation, rebirth, and then destruction. So do not get afraid of the destruction is what my team is saying. So like really honing in on the creation piece of it, the rebirth piece, and then the destruction. So like destroying whatever no longer needs to be in your life or around you, creating new that which you want to see here and rebirthing yourself or rebranding yourself at any time because that is your birthright. So I see a lot of goddess energy around you. And that was just like three archetypes that were very different. So we had Mother Mary, Athena, and Medusa. So it's kind of like showing you all the different stages that they were just talking about. And I would like you um, to delve further into the goddess archetype and what that really looks like for you or in your life. Uh, and do not be scared, they're saying. So even if something looks mean and nasty or ugly, which it is not, that is just humans de depictation or depicting the power of the goddess and they were trying to create um an image or likeness around a power that they did not understand but i believe you will understand in your work and so i will just leave that with you so all powerful and i would it feels very good to me so. uh -huh. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. So as we're wrapping up, we just want to remind you that you can join our Learn to Channel if you would like for deeper <laughs> connections to enhance your communication with spirit, to have a community of support, to learn about channeling for yourself and others. Right now we have a special, we have two special mentoring sessions coming up next month and everything can be found at spiritschoolonline.com. And then we have our 111 event also. It's open to everybody. And if you join the Learn to Channel, it's a bonus where we're giving you um, a VIP pass to the event. So it's included, yeah. And you can find Nicole at My Angel Team and you can find me at Amy Sikarski. So we would love to see you guys again. Put notifications on. We're gonna go live a couple more times next week. And we love you all so much. We love you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay high vibe. <laughs> <laughs> See you Bye. soon. Bye. <laughs>